In this tutorial, we are going to go through the basics of animation. I'm going to create a sphere. And because I want the sphere to be um, sitting on the grid and not going into the grid, I'm going to set this base to pivot and then create my sphere. It will create the pivot point right at the, uh, the, the bottom of the sphere, which will help us in the animation as well, hopefully. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about animation first a little bit. Animation is basically a series of frames or pictures um, within one second, which will give us the illusion as if something is moving. Technically, nothing is moving. What we see is just a series of different pictures um, where we see, for example, a ball moving from one location to another location, but we'll see that in multiple pictures, and it seems as if one ball is moving from point A to point B. In order to create animations in 3D Studio Max, you need to be in your animation mode. For example, by going to Auto Key, the shortcut for that is N on your keyboard. When you have this red frame in 3D Studio Max, take it as a warning. It's telling you that whatever you do, it will record it and it will keep a record of this. This ball is at this, this position at this moment and at frame zero. If I was to move to frame, let's say 25, for example, get my move tool and move this, you will see that there will be two, crea uh, two keyframes created on my timeline. And these keyframes are red at this stage. Red means movement, green means rotation, blue means scale. So I'm going to go back here actually. I'm going to turn off my animation mode. I'm going to create two more copies of this sphere because these two copies have a have the exact same keyframe there. I'm going to select them and just delete their keyframes. So select both, delete the keyframes. This one is the one which is being animated. I'll press F4 as well. And the movement being, is being animated and that means that the ball moves from point A to point B and the keyframes that we have are red. If I was to select the second sphere, turn animation on, get my rotation tool, and rotate this at 360 degrees. Now because I want to rotate this 360 degrees, and if I was to click and drag, you can see that down here, it's showing you how many degrees you rotated it. Because I want to do 360 degrees, and I want to make sure it's exactly 360 degrees, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my angle snap tool. The shortcut for that is A on your keyboard. When this icon is on, I can click and drag, and it will snap to 5 degrees automatically. So that 55, 60, I'm just reading the numbers down here, by the way. So 5, 60, hundred and something so I can just go until I find 360 degrees and that's it now if you look at the keyframes here the keyframes are green because red stands for movement green stands for rotation and I'm going to select this on frame 25 get my scale tool and just scale this up actually scale it down a little bit so we can see the other ones as well the keyframe for this one is blue so now if we look at these three spheres that we have, one's moving, one's rotating, and one's being scaled down. Movement is red, rotation is green, scale is blue. I'm going to delete these two now. I'm going to go to frame 25 where this uh, sphere is being moved. And then I'm going to move it. The movement, the animation for movement is already done because I can see the red keyframes. Now I'm going to apply a rotation to it as well. I will rotate this 100 and, uh, 360 degrees. Now, as you can see, I have red and green in my keyframes. That means that my sphere is moving and rotating at the same time. If I go to frame 25 again, and scale it while it's being rotated you can see that my keyframe has turned into red green blue which means it's being moved and rotated and scaled at the same time 
So if I play the animation, you can see that it's move, it's moving, it's rotating, and it's being scaled as well. From zero to twenty-five is almost one second. Technically, it's you know, twenty-four, but if I was to select the keyframe and just move it across the timeline to let's say frame hundred, so that it takes longer for the animation to play. So if I click play now you can see that it takes longer for the animation to play. If I needed more frames, right now it's from 0 to 100. If I wanted more frames, I could hold Control and Alt on my keyboard and then do a right click and drag on my timeline. That will increase my end time. Or I could hold left click and that would increase my start time. Alternatively, I could click on this icon down here that says Time Configuration and then manually enter my own start and end times. So I will say starts at 0, finishes at let's say 200. And I could have this object selected so I can see the keyframe, which is there. If I don't have anything selected, I don't see any keyframes. You only see the keyframes of the objects that you have selected. So if I select this object, I can select the keyframe, click and drag that across to frame 200 and now it will take much longer for the for the sphere to be animated. I'm going to delete this sphere and I'm going to turn off my auto key. I'm going to create a new sphere. I'm going to go to my front viewport and I'm going to move this up here. And I'm going to create a bouncing ball animation. In order to create a bouncing ball animation or in order to create any animation for that case, you do not need to record the first frame. I'm going to press Alt key and if I wanted to, I could click on this key icon here and set key so that I manually create the keys for that, but you don't really have to do that. I'm going to go to frame, let's say 25, and I'm going to assume that this ball is falling. So I'm going to bring it down here until it hits the ground. And once it hits the ground, it's supposed to jump up and come up and then come down again. But every time that it hits the ground and it goes up, it doesn't go high as much as the previous position. So if the pre previous position is up here, the next time it bounces, hits the floor and comes up, it, should, it would probably be around here. The next time it bounces and comes up, it would probably be around here. The next time it would probably bounce up and be around here. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to go 0 to 25, this happens. Now it should probably take less time, less than 25 frames to come up. So I'm going to say um, 45 seconds, rather, or 46 maybe. Actually, let's just say 45. Bring that up. I could take it to let's say frame uh, 62 bring it down go to frame 80 or 77 take it up just bring it down again it's probably not going to be a very good animation um, but if you look at the spacing between my keyframes that's long and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter as it goes on. Maybe that one, I'll take it a little bit more forward. So my animation right now, if I play it, is that. It's not a very good animation, but we can fix it. While I have the ball selected, I want to go to my motion tab. And I'm going to click on trajectories. And this will show me the path that the ball is moving on. If I want to change that path, I need to click on sub object so that I can select each of these white squares. Each of these white squares is representing these keyframes. So if I was to take my timeline on top of this keyframe, you can see that exactly at that very moment, that's where the pivot point of the sphere touches that point. What I can also do is turn sub object on so I can select these and manually move these myself so I'm thinking to myself maybe that should be there that should be here a little bit maybe this can move a little bit more forward 
alongside this. Let's play the animation. Okay. So at least it looks a little bit better. But there's one major aspect missing. And the fact is gravity. Every time the ball is coming closer to the ground, it needs to speed up because of the because of the force of gravity. And when it goes up, it needs to slow down because gravity is pulling it back down. In order to apply that effect to the ball, we need to go to animation and choose sorry we need to go to graph editors and choose uh, track view curve editor here what I see on the left hand side is pretty much my world in my world I have objects one of those objects is my sphere and in this case it's my only object sphere 001 now my sphere has transformation which is basically uh, the movements, the rotation, the scale of it, and it has other properties that we're not going to talk about right now. I'm going to select, I'm going to go to position, and in position we have X, Y, and Z. And these are the keyframes that we have created. Now, even though in our front viewport, it seems like we animated this, or when the ball, the sphere comes up and down it's going up on the y-axis technically it's not if I move my window up here down here you can see that even though the gizmo says y is up down here tells you z is up and that's what you want to go with so in this case in the z position these are the keyframes for the uh, for the sphere jumping up and if I go to, for example, the X position, these are the keyframes of, of X position, Y position, and Z position. For Z position, which goes up and down, I want to select those and modify those. When, it, when this sphere comes up, it needs to be slow. Up here, we have tangents. This one says, set tangents to fast. This one says, set tangents to slow. If I click on slow, nothing happens. That's because by default, these are already set to be slow. So what I want to do is set the tangents down here to be fast. But before I do that, I'm going to move this key, uh, this window up here. I'm going to play the animation so you can see how the animation looks. Not very interesting. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the tangents the, where the sphere hits the floor to fast. Did that work? Set to fast. Now you can see that the graph changes as well. So now if I play the animation, now that's much more interesting than having the same consistent pace throughout the entire animation. So now starts quick, slows down as it goes up, quick, slow, quick. That's very good, and that's exactly what we wanted. If you think the, the tutorials are going too fast, please leave a comment and let me know. However, um, as I'm creating these tutorials, I'm assuming that you guys have watched the tutorials before these. And you have watched the tutorials in terms of the basics of 3ds Max. So you have a good understanding of the workflow within 3D Studio Max. Um, this window at the bottom left corner should help a lot of you guys um, wondering what keyframes or, or, or what keys I'm pressing on my keyboard. Hopefully it will be a great help if you need any help. Please let me know, send me a message, comment, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.